said my boy has a hard time waking up and a delay brushing his teeth. Alright, okay, so for today's session, we're going to talk about a stress-free morning routine at home. So those of you who ask me questions about separation anxiety, drop off in school, we will address this another time. In fact, I've already talked about separation anxiety in my free webinar. It's actually on the portal learn.ourlittleplayness.com. There's like a lot of tips in there. So today, we're going to talk about what happens in the morning, okay? I have some of you from Indonesia. Hi, Harialo. I hope I pronounced your, your handle correctly. Nor said hi. Okay, so I want to first start off by saying that children don't have that sense of urgency that we have as uh, adults. In fact, I think it's up eight years old when they really feel that sense of urgency. So what you want to do is to really empower your children in the morning because the more you do things for them in the morning, the more it might lead to power struggles in the future. So as far as you can, even though it's faster for you to do things, on your own, it is actually more encouraged for you to empower them. And today I'm going to share six tips to help you. Bear in mind, you don't have to use all the strategies that I mentioned. In fact, I want you to just pick one or two today. After the session, I want you to write down one strategy that you want to try and implement because we don't want to make too many changes as well. Okay, so I'm going to share like six tips and I'm going to have actually some slides here. So let me try to pop the slides up. Right, so I'm going to start. The first tip right, is all about the night before. So what you want to make sure, all right, oops, let me see. Okay, what you want to make sure, number one, is to that everyone is getting enough sleep, including yourself, okay? If you look at this chart, I got it from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, make sure that your kids sleep enough in the whole day. So those of you who are worried about nap time, do not fast about that half an hour, one hour of nap time. Look at their sleep in totality. Such a word, totality. Okay, so um, toddlers. I'm, I think most of you have kids who are toddlers. 11 to 14 hours of sleep, including nap time. When they sleep enough, they are not as grumpy and grouchy in the morning. It works for us adults as well. Let me ask you, if you have enough sleep, you wake up feeling refreshed, isn't it? But if you slept at 12 midnight and you wake up, you get so easily annoyed and irritated with your kids. So number one tip is to make sure that everyone is getting enough sleep. If you're, you think that your child is getting enough sleep based on this table, can you type in like a yes, they, are, they have enough hours they step enough or something so at least we can get a hang of don't, don't know you know how how much your child is sleeping okay whether it's sufficient or not my second tip is this let me see my second tip because i have them all written up <laughs> okay this is my second tip prepare the night before so tip number two you want to minimize the stuff that's going on in the morning. For some reason, time is ticking really fast in the morning. So we want to also minimize the responsibilities that everyone in the house have. So whatever you want to prepare, try to do it the night before. If you want to cut some fruits for breakfast, cut it the night before. You need to pack lunches, get the, you know, the, the bento set out, get everything ready. Let your children choose their clothes or their uniform the night before. If you start young, they will get into the habit of preparing their things early. So you can get them to hang their clothes outside, get their socks ready, get their mask ready. Now we all have to put on a mask. We don't want them, we don't want you to end up a power struggle with your children over the choice of mask in the morning. If there is any power struggle, do it the night before, okay? Pack the bags the night before take it out and assign a place for all these school essentials. So if there are forms that you got to fill in, do it the night before. If you need to sharpen the pencils, do it the night before, right? Let me see what else. Um, yeah, to pack their bags and to make sure that they know where their bags are. So when it's time to leave the house, they go straight to get their bags and they leave. So whatever that you can do the night before, do it. Okay, this is a good habit to instill in your kids as well. I don't know how old your kids are. I think most of you should have kids about two to five if you have older kids you have to make sure that they take ownership for this so let them know where they want to put their bags some 
parents they have hooks at the doors so that's where they hook their bags hook their I don't know, instruments or a music pack whatever is there they don't have to search for it in the morning okay tip number three all right where's my tip number three okay here yeah oh no i can't find it let me see where is it okay yeah okay sorry <laughs> Make a morning routine chart with your children. Now, children need to have predictability. They need to know what is going to happen. If you don't have a fixed routine, they are going to test your boundaries and they don't really know what is expected of them. So regardless, your kids are two or eight. They need to know what is going to happen. You can create a morning chart with your children now let's talk about those of you who have young kids who cannot read words so how are you going to create a morning routine chart now your chart doesn't need to just have words it can have pictures so what you can do either draw it out doodle or print out the little uh, activities they need to do brushing their teeth changing their clothes eating their breakfast put, taking their water bottles things like that it all it can, you can all print it out and have them to stick it in sequence so that's one way. If you have older kids, you can do like a checklist. So that, that's what they can do as they go along, they can put a tick. If you have been following me, you know my bedtime routine. I actually have a slider of a picture of my kids and they slide their way to bed. So you can do that as your, for your morning routine as well. I have a few ideas. You can actually use clothes pack also to pack when they are moving on um, along the routine or post it. So I have this idea that when your kids wake up, they, you can print arrows and direct them to where they should go. So it's like if you go to a concert, they will direct you which entrance and where you should sit, right? So you can just print arrows from the bedroom, you draw the arrow to the toilet and the arrow back to the living room and the arrow to where the bags are or where the uniforms are and the arrow out the door. So this is how you can make it fun for your kids. And because of novelty, they will likely follow, but you say, but they will only just do it once or twice. Get, at least you get them started. Let them know that they're actually independent and able to follow through, okay? And you can have um, post-it notes. So it can be like a game. Now, as they go along each station, they collect the post-it notes. And at the end, you can like, you know, count the number of points they have or stuff like that. It is a bit um, troublesome, some of you might find it like that's a lot of work for me to do but kids being kids they enjoy they like it they like things to be fun they like to enjoy what they're doing if you create a stressful morning they will synchronize to how uptight you are and how um, unhappy you are nagging at them and they will let the lesser chance for them to want to follow your instructions okay so let them take ownership and let them create this morning chart. If you want a template, can you just type it in? May I have a, a, a template would be good for me, a printable or whatever, because I actually have a bag on my mind. I thought of creating one, but I'm not sure whether you guys will be keen. So just type in the comment and say, yeah, okay, you, you, will, you will love the printable. So Montessori, um, see you, Iona asked, like a treasure hunt of post-its? Yes, you can do like a simple treasure hunt game. Okay, right, and for this morning routine chart, I forgot to add in, I would encourage you to get your child to pretend play in advance. So you do this like the night before or in the afternoons. Get them to pretend what happens in the morning when they do this, what do you do, something like that. So that will get them, you know, have an idea of, all right, so this is what I have to expect. Okay, next. Okay, I can see some of you interested in the template. So good. So if you so if I see more people having it then like you know I will want to create it for you guys. Okay. Cool. Alright, so next one will be here. Wake up to a good mood. Now who likes to wake up to your friend or or, or your partner being grumpy, right? Now my son when he was younger, he, whenever he wakes up from his nap, he'll be super grumpy and he gets triggered so easily. 
until I decided that okay, there's no need for me to spend one hour putting him to nap. He wakes up after thirty minutes and he gets so grumpy. So we all want to wake up in a good mood, and I encourage you to play some music. So that day when the kids were were refused to wake up, I played the Paw Patrol theme song on Spotify, and it was it's new, it's a new experience, and they got like you know really interested in it. Or you give them hugs. So every morning I lie in bed with my kids for three minutes. So I tell them that with three minutes and we're going to hug together, and that will kind of fill up their emotional bucket, and they will be ready for the day. You can sing a song as well to get them to wake up. I also recommend you telling a joke or tease them to let them laugh. That's how you can take the stress out of the mornings. And I actually have another idea. I'm not sure how many of you want to try this. You can tell them a story, so you narrate your own story, and when the part that is most interesting, you pause and you say, "I'm gonna continue the story on the way to school." So hopefully, they will be eager to know what happened up to the character, and they will follow through their morning routine. So this is one trick as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to share a lot of tips. Just write down the ones that you think you can implement. I don't expect you to be able to try out everything. Okay. When we talk about them having a good mood, I also want you to pay attention to how your children perform in the morning. If they do cooperate, they do eat their breakfast. They remember to bring their water bottles or remember to put grab their socks. You want to encourage them. You want to have positive reinforcement. You can tell them things like, "Oh, you managed to re- you remember your water bottle." You know, do you don't need don't say things like "Good job, well done," because they don't really know exactly what they do good. But say, "Oh, you remember to do this. You ate your breakfast fast today." Things like that. Okay, right? Okay, I see that many of you ask for the template. So good. Okay, like give me some time and uh, let me prep it. I'll try to make it editable so that you can adjust it according to your own schedules. Okay. Right, so that's tip number four to wake up to a good mood, create a positive environment in your house, and try to praise them, and because laughter and all very infectious, so tell them a joke, tell them a story. Okay, now the fifth tip is to use a visual countdown timer. This can be helpful for the younger kids who don't really have a concept of time. So you can talk about how the timer. If you have、uh, your phone, it should lightly show you how the line、um, decreases in a circle until it 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 counts down to the end. So that will help your younger one. And you can set time in intervals. So five minutes for them to get to the breakfast table, another five minutes for them to get out of the house, something like that. Okay. So you can use a visual countdown timer, and of course, put it somewhere where they can see. Right, my next tip is for you to stay calm and connected. Right, they will synchronize to your frequency. If you are flustered, you are frazzled. It is very difficult for your kids to be calm and follow through the routine. The most important person is you. So. Wake. Make sure you have enough sleep. If you can wake up earlier than your kids to get yourself ready for those who have to prepare yourself for for work, make sure you are prepared first before you um help your kids. Okay. You want to stay calm and connected. What do I mean? In the morning, we tend to keep nagging at our kids. Now, the more you nag at your kids, the more your kids will wait for you to nag. Before they carry out what they need to do, just say it once and make sure you have eye contact with them. Do not yell across from the living room to the bedroom to expect them to cooperate. They will not. You got to connect with them, speak to their emotional brain. Perhaps some some of you mentioned that your kids um are still playing with the toy in the morning. Don't want to have breakfast. You can connect first. You seem to be enjoying the toy so much. Oh,、well, looks like the toys, uh, uh, no, the Lego that you built is very interesting. Now, shall we say goodbye to the Lego for now because we have to get ready for school, things like that. Because you connect with him first when he's playing the Lego instead of telling him, stop playing. It's time to go. 
now when you use words like stop playing, it's time to go, for younger kids, they only hear the word playing. For older kids, when you say stop, they start to become very defensive and this will definitely lead into a power struggle, okay? Alright, some of you are asking me for the tips. I have a summary at the end of this session. So don't worry about it. Later, when I put it up, you can do a screenshot, okay? So this is my last tip that I hope that you are able to calm yourself down and that will help if you wake up early and prepare your stuff earlier. And one another trick is instead of yelling at them, you will want to whisper to them. So you lower your volume. That is also one way for you to stay calm, okay? For everybody to wake up, have, bre have their breakfast and go out the door, it is a team effort. So you want to engage the help of your kids. If you start yelling at them and making them feel stressed out or anxious, it is more difficult for them to follow your instructions, okay? So I hope this is helpful. I am going to share the summary here. Okay, so you can do a screenshot. Do I need to okay, do a screenshot of this? Let me repeat. Make sure that everyone is getting enough sleep, including yourself. Prepare the things, any work the night before. So you want to minimize the responsibilities that everyone has in the morning. Create a morning routine chart with your children. Don't do it for them because you want them to take ownership. So do it with them. Wake up in a good mood, play a music, give hugs, sing a song, tell a story. You can use a visual countdown timer and finally to stay calm and connected. Okay? You can do a screenshot now but what I want you to do is out of all this, can you type in one thing that you want to try tomorrow morning? For those who are in Singapore or, or if it's night time for you. Okay? So the next morning, what do you want to try? Just one strategy. Because the more you try, the more changes you make, it's more difficult for your kids to adapt. Okay? So, Mojojo said, My daughter will talk back when I ask her to eat her breakfast faster. She said, You want me to choke. Okay. Firstly, we don't want to nag. So, we don't want to say things like, Hurry up, eat your breakfast, we're going to be late. Because the more you say it, the more frustrated your child will be. Just say it once. Look at them at the eye level and tell them, I'm going to remind you once, that's all. I'm going to tell you that we are going to go off in 10 minutes and I need you to have your breakfast. Then get them to repeat what you just tell them. Can you repeat what the mommy or daddy say? Let them take ownership. Let them be responsible. Okay? Right. So let me see what are strategies you want to try. Nadara said, stay calm and connected. Steph said, wake up in a good mood. Yeah. And Celia said, prepare the night before. Stay calm and connected. Harvio said, give a hug and sing a song. Wake up to a good mood. The hardest is to stay calm. It's very tough. I totally agree with Specky Tam who said that. All right. It is very, very tough. So you have to be in the right mood. You have to wake up earlier. You have to tell yourself that... The more frustrated you are, the more difficult it is for them to cooperate. Okay? Shrita said, wake up in a good mood. Wake up in a good mood. Hugs for three minutes. Yes. Okay. Sing a song before brushing the teeth. Yeah. Why not? Or you can play their favorite song. You can do a little dance to get them to dance their way to the bathroom as they brush their teeth. So when everybody is in a good mood, it is more, it's, it's a happier thing, right? For the lesser stress in the morning. After this, all of us will go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let me know any more, any, or do you have any tips? So what I want to do now is to answer some of your questions that I posted this morning. Okay, let me see. Alright, this is, this is, let me see, let me take this up. Okay, I got this. Okay, this is quite a cool feature. So, question, the children don't cooperate when we ask them to brush their teeth and they shower. The children will not cooperate if they are constantly being told what to do or being directed. Ask them what they should do. 
instead of telling them what they should do. So you can use your morning routine and you can tell them, right, when we are done with waking up, what is the first thing that we're going to do? And let them tell you instead, okay? Let me answer another question. Right. Okay, I thought this is quite interesting. He claims that he's still tired even though he had slept early. A child who is complaining that maybe he's unwell or he's still tired, he could, I'm not saying he, he will, but he could be having some kind of anxiety in school or at home. So you might want to ask him, how is he feeling in school? How is he enjoying himself in school? And he could also want your attention. So you might want to, you know, spend three minutes in the morning with him, uh, hugging him, giving him cuddles, and let him feel at ease so that he doesn't feel so anxious. Okay, so that's one trick you can try. Um, yeah, right. He wants to play and not go to school, especially after being at home during circuit breaker. So for those who are not from Singapore, circuit breaker is a time where we were quarantined at home because of COVID-19. So now that we have um, eased the, the restrictions, kids are going back to school. So this mommy said that the kids want to play and don't, not go to school. This is exactly what my son told me. He doesn't want to go to school because he wants to stay at home to play. So I can understand it's difficult for children to adjust. Even adults, we find it difficult to adjust to like so many changes as well. I encourage you to be patient with your kids. And of course, you won't want to say things like, oh no, you have to go to school. Because we want to attune to them first. We want them to know that we understand how they feel and their emotions. So you can say things like, you really wish to be at home. You don't want to go to school, right? Now, what I did for my son is to plan it for him because he has um, he needs routines. He needs to know what to expect. So I have a schedule and I tell him that there's a time to play, there's a time to go to school, there's a time to do anything that he wants as long as we plan and, and that helps as well. Okay? Right. Okay, let me answer just a few more questions. Kids refuse to get changed into their uniforms. So a few ways to get around this, make sure you hang the uniforms out there first and ask them what they need to do. And as you let them, as they change, you can play a song, you can ask them a riddle, tell a joke, and make it fun, right? Rather than the routine, hurry up, change your, get changed, you're getting late, why are you not listening to me? Why, you, why don't you want to change your, into your uniform? Your teachers are going to scold you. The more you nag, the, the more your kids will not want to cooperate, right? Like, who likes to be nagged at? So what, why don't we try our strategy to make it fun for them, okay? Right, uh, maybe a few more questions. My son wants to play with his toys instead of getting ready. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Attune to your kids first. Let them know that, right, you want to play with your toys and you're enjoying yourself so much. That has to come first. Then you go on to tell them that it's time to go to school. We have to say goodbye to your toys and we'll come back to play with your toys when you come back from school, okay? Let me see. Okay, this is going to be my last question. My three-year-old refuses to wash up and change after his breakfast. There might be a reason why. Either he's trying to just seek uh, some kind of connection from you or he's uncomfortable with going to school. There are lots of changes in the routine. He's still adapting. And sometimes it's also because at three-year-old, they want to be independent they want to decide what they want to do so he wants to you know exert his power getting by getting to this power struggle with you he refuses to wash up and to change so what i recommend is to make sure your three-year-old knows what he has to do in sequence and number two empower him let him tell you what he needs to do what you can do is also to pretend play prior to the morning so maybe in the afternoon let him know that right he can uh, what, what he needs to do after breakfast, he needs to wash up, he needs to change it into his uniform, okay? Alright, so these are all the questions that I want to answer. Um, let, me, let me see what other questions you have here. If not, we're going to end the session. Nadara said, what visual timers to use? I actually just use my phone, my phone countdown timer. There is like a, a visual circle that will reduce in its uh, length, okay? Okay, any more questions? So I can see that most of you have decided on your strategy. If you haven't, type in what you 
want to try out tomorrow and let me know okay so maybe what i will do for the sake of the rest of for those who just came in i'm going to put up the summary again okay so these these are some tips that you can do janice asks how do you guide your children on clock reading it takes a while for children to want to learn the clock and they must be motivated and that will make your teaching faster you can get a, a clock a real clock like those alarm clock and you can turn the the hour and a minute hand to show them get them interested and clock reading you can play games so there are games where like um you know the mr wolf what time is it mr wolf game then you know they can turn the the clock to fit the timing or there are books to teach about clock reading as well yeah some parents they do use like assessment books I recommend you can engage your kids in play that will get them more interested you can come up with a paper plate and write the time of the the time on pretend that there's a clock get them to draw the hour hand minute hand or you can even you use those pins that we can turn the the, um, the strips of paper to illustrate the different time okay the hour and minute hand all right so i hope you found this session useful can you give me a thumbs up let me know your biggest takeaway and what do you hope to achieve and whether you find this session useful should i come up more and tell you more uh, guide you um, for any particular topics or yeah just give me some feedback so that i know okay right okay i see thumbs up i see lots of thumbs up right so i hope that this has been really useful for you if there are any questions you can just feel free to drop me a direct message you can screenshot this and share it with your friends no worries you can share it on your stories and try out and let me know how it goes okay i'm curious to know whether it works or not now, even if it does does not work it doesn't mean that you know you should give up because you've got to persevere and there are some strategies that really require a lot of patience on your part and your kids so yeah, have a very good night and we'll talk again. Bye-bye.